like to move superintendent's report um, right after public comment to item two. Uh, I will also be amending to add um, on item six to add uh, a C student representative as well as adding in number 11, which is an executive session one under one BSA 3133, the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee provided that the public body shall make a final decision to hire, appoint, or, or to appoint a public officer or employee in an open meeting and shall explain the reasons for its final decisions during the open meeting. Can I ask one other thing to be sure. sure. before we lose Holly? Uh, finance the biomass controls, if we could put that into the superintendent's report so she can we, she can speak to that if you have any questions on before she has to leave. Okay. So we will start off with public comments. There is no public electronically here. I don't see any in the room. Well, we have a, we have cat TV, Richard Bum. That's it. Okay. Um, so with no public comments, we'll move on to uh, the superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, we go first with our Paul Anderson, director of NICE operations. It was matter. correct. You know, <laughs> there's other terms in there too. Uh, she's going to give you a, a report on, and she's been going to If you're on another board, you might have seen. Um, She's given reports at Stalin. I'm trying to get you access. The elementary, elementary district in Arlington. What was the thing? Should be on your screen now. All right. So I just put together a couple of quick slides um, to kind of go over. Oops. That's your whole project. So um, we've been working on a design for HVAC uh, pieces of equipment and systems for all the schools in the SVSU. Um, and we have a big pot of money and out of that big pot of money, the, S um, the Mount Anthony Union has 5,600,000 and change-ish that we have to do to um, uh, I am so sorry. I'm, I'm usually better at this. <laughs> um, so for the MAU for just the high school, um, I should add that. Uh, so the federal fund scope. I don't know, I'm going to take the blame for that because maybe half an hour ago, I went in and made her change some of these slides. So she may be a little... <laughs> No, it's all good. It's all good. So through um, the American Recovery Act and our best uh, the Mount Anthony Union District got a pot of money uh, for the high school. This is for the high school. This doesn't include the middle school because it's a separate it's a separate project in and of itself. But the, the idea behind it is to go into the buildings and make sure, A, they're ventilated properly, be there within the temperature range set by the agency of education and that the incoming air is dehumidified. So it, 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 it's a dry. Um, so the middle school uh, already has the design complete. Uh, the intent for the middle school is to add air conditioning, the rooftop unit and all the duct work when the building was built was all contemplated air conditioning they just never installed the chiller. Um, so there's two things we're doing at the middle school, <clears throat> um, adding air conditioning, and we're also upgrading the building management system, which is generally not specifically uh, original to the building. So uh, out of a 19 year old building, we're running it off of software that, and hardware that's 19 years old. So once both of those things get upgraded, uh, we'll be able to improve the air quality and um, the comfort of the occupants. Uh, so this is the high school. We've received quotes only. So we're in, we're in design development for the MAU high school campus. Uh, and uh, again, we want to meet those three criteria set by the agency that we want to uh, hit ventilation standards, hit the temperature range, and dehumidify. Um, so the 
This is construction only. I pulled Tim from that 22 million. That is hard costs and soft costs, just the construction out. Um, and this is only for ventilation. This isn't for ADA or any other scope of work. Um, so East Campus, 1.3, Student Center, 500,000. And so the estimated costs uh, for, to meet the agency of ed, air requirements, uh, you can see is not cheap. Um, so my ask of you all is we have um, a little over $5.5 million. Where should we continue to design and focus on with the funds we have? We only have about a third of the money we need for the project. Well, it is sobering. I mean, you know, it, yeah, it, yeah, that we aren't going to be able to accomplish everything they want. Arlington just experienced the same thing. They had to scale back uh, there about a third. About a third. Yeah. yeah, so we got the SVSU in total got 12.4 million. And so we parsed out to each district and then to each building based on which, what each building needed. To meet the agency yeah. requirements. I mean, Holly, you know these buildings better than we do, hopefully, so far. You know, it's like, do you are you ready to make a recommendation to the board on what should be their, you know, one, two, three priorities to spend the five point three million? Yeah. So, um, I I would look to the group, and I'd also look to the principals and say, hey, um, Chris, you're pretty well. Anyway, your project is designed. I need to find a contractor, which is um, has been its own challenge because it's federal funds. You have to go through federal procurement and state okay. procurement. So, that, so that's going to happen. How much is that uh, of the five point three million? How much would that take the middle school project? Oh, that's separate. So, so that's, yeah, so I have two point five million for the middle school project. All right, so that's oh, that's so that's this five million, million is just for the high school. This is only for Millennium. Okay. okay, okay. So high school. Let, let me just clarify to make sure I understand it. So the middle school will be taken care of for yeah. all ADA federal standards with with for HVAC. For HVAC. It's just for HVAC. So not ADA. Not, not ADA. ADA. Right. Okay. Nothing else. This and, is just and that's assuming we come in at, you know, with the at the estimates. Luckily the estimate is contemplates today's market and not pre-COVID. So it in their professional estimator, so we so you have a degree of confidence. Yeah, that, yeah. that we're close. Okay. What is the um, timeline that we have to use the, the <clears throat> funds? So we have to use all of the funds by September thirtieth of thirtieth of two thousand twenty-four. So we have two summers. Yeah. So will the work begin this summer? That is a very good question. So I am um, doing my best. The people to state that oversee this money, see my name pop up on call, calls, and I would go, oh, God, it's her again. Um, <laughs> because we, we we need to have ventilation, or we need to have air conditioning in the middle school, as you well, know. We are losing the window, and it's because of state approval not coming through yet. Right. So and we haven't even gone out to bid for. We have gone out to bid for the, for the middle school. Middle school, but we none of these other projects. So uh, not in this district. Yeah. So Arlington has already contracted. Yes, uh, the elementary district is in different phases, different buildings. Um, so this, this, um, yeah, this amount of money is just for the high school. Um, I sitting here, I would have to ask, like you, like you suggested, um, those who are in the building every day. To, to give us a perspective, um, a couple of things come to mind. Is it is it greatest need from a physical plant, meaning these systems are so old we have to replace them. Let's use that money for that. Is it greatest need by number of students and number of people impacted? Is it greatest need by we can get an entire building done or an entire wing done, and that would that might be the most efficient way to go. But I it's. I, sitting here, I don't know that I have any perspective on that. It would be looking to you to, to say yeah. what's the 
what are the areas of greatest need that we can make this money go the furthest now? And then I would ask, I would say the second part of it is, what's the plan to get the remaining 10 that's needed to finish it up? Yeah. So from, from my mind's <laughs> eye, and Tim, I don't live in the building every day, uh, I would love nothing more than to uh, replace all of the oil boilers in the existing mechanical room. They're old, they're inefficient. All of the piping um, goes to unit ventilators where uh, the piping has gate valves that have broken off over time. It's just that the, the HVAC system in the original section of the building is original to the building and it's many decades old, right? So, so, so is it HVAC or is it air quality? Both. So it's, it would be boilers and air the, handlers. The, um, that answer? The, what they call it, the 86 edition or something like yep. that. But, yeah. but that's the one that we've struggled with um, humidity control and had and to pay for remediation for mold and ceiling replacement. So I would think something that eliminates our maintenance staff having to go around in uh, individually empty dehumidifiers would yeah. be a priority. Yeah. So well, the, uh, replacing the boilers uh, help efficiency and, and eventually save money too? Absolutely. So that's um, why I broke the main project out because the, uh, thank you for that, Jim, the level zero is the basement. So that has the mechanical room. It has the humidif humidification issues um, and the, the uh, new wing, the 84, 85 wing, and Southwest Tech are both run off of the main mechanical room in that existing high school. So it's all one big. So when those additions were built, they didn't get their own heating system. It was. Yeah, they got like they got heat exchangers and heat exchangers, you know, things to make it work. But um, but the hot water that runs through it is still generated, and the boilers are in the old building. Yeah. Sorry for. I think. Oh, no, I just wanted to kind of add on what Scott was saying. Are there any of these buildings that are going to get cycled out over the coming years? You know, that be consideration that um, <clears throat> maybe the oldest building is not going to survive the test of time, and that might be a place to maybe by process of elimination start and say, hey, we'll take this out of the running, so to speak. Right, and that's that's uh, what I've been working on for Jim is a master plan of each campus. Uh, and I um, have lots of thoughts and feelings about Mount Anthony. Um, the student center in East Campus are uh, poorly insulated, poorly air sealed, um, not energy efficient with their HVAC systems. Um, so I, 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 there's so much that needs to be addressed in these buildings. And, and um, when I look at the original building, it was it was a award-winning architecture project in its day like it was beautiful once um and i think it can be again uh i'm a big fan of adaptive reuse and using what we have like we already have a sewer connection we already have a water connection we are you know we have some of the infrastructure in place um so i, I would love to do a phased gut renovation of the existing but that is just that is that yeah, is part of the master plan that, that is part of the master plan yeah. I just wonder for this particular piece if there was one way to sort of eliminate a couple so you could focus on like the main building. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so there's, there's you may be looking at a you know us coming back with the suggestion for bond issue going forward for what can't be accomplished by this. Chair, did you have a question Um the your recommendation of replacing the boilers or whatever is that a part is that currently estimated into the 15 million? Yep. yep. Um, and, and if so, what amount is that? So that is in, it is in the main project line. Right. Yeah. But how much of the main project line? Mm -hmm. I can tell you. Is that level is that zero? Level zero? Level zero. But that's the whole basement. Oh, okay. Will that have direct impact on the students learning? We do like I mean I know I know we're talking about the building and the efficiency and the, like but it does that it like we're putting changing those boilers out impact their living environment yeah the, the so and this is this type kind of kind of ties into the wood chip um, 
the widget boiler software too is that the um, if you think of a car from 1968 and a car now, they're they're vastly different, right? Like one has all the bells and whistles, and so we're up. We're asking our building to operate. We're asking a 1968 car to operate like a 2023 car, and it just the results are about to expect. But I I agree with Stephanie. The priority should be, in my opinion, areas that impact where our students are. And that that's, can be, you know, to make the building more comfortable to be used as an education space and our, and our staff too. Yeah. No, no offense to the staff, Mr. Mr. Payne. I want Mr. Payne to be comfortable in his work too. But yeah. um, well, it's, 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 it's in my office, you can experience that. Yeah. I, I, I have been in your office. Yes, I, I, when he sits right above the mechanical room and, and yeah. nothing's insulated and it's, yeah. it's, it, it's uncontrolled because the equipment we so, currently have in there some control. So environmental comfort, if I could yeah. use the term. Yeah. yeah. So basically, we'd be replacing the the systems, but we'd be working through our current venting systems. I'm assuming that mm -hmm. that's not we, what we could afford to change now. But we feel that replacing, even without replacing the ventilation portion of it, would it increase the by just replacing the actual yeah. machines. Would it increase? Uh, Create a more comfortable environment, even without the actual ventilation portion. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I would just add something. As someone who's lived in the building for two years now, the, the heating would be great. Even the new metal, the newer metal school. We used to joke that the heat would always take a couple of days to catch up. So if you had a cold snap, it wouldn't instantly warm. And then when it got hot. We didn't have AC, but it would cool off for a few days. The high school has that, so identifying a boiler system is an excellent idea. Um, the 80s wing, weirdly enough, is one of the more inefficient structures as far as it, it tends to warm up pretty dramatically on the top floor, and the bottom floor tends to feel a little swampy when I, you have the changes in temperature. And so, so your newer part of the building is actually the one that can probably be addressed. I want to give you. Uh, an example of something a building's built in 19, opens in 1958. All the windows are single paint. So we've had a discussion with Holly and her staff about putting some tint on it in the cafeteria because you get so much reflection off the asphalt and it superheats the cafeteria. That's warm with 300 kids in there eating lunch. But the contractor said we couldn't do that because these the seals. installed seals that you put on to, uh, to cut down light is too much heat exchange for the single pane glass, which is the entire building, and will actually crack at the windows. And then you will chase yourself around the building. So uh, a, 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 re or a, a new heating system is great. Then you got the pane <laughs> glass sitting in uh, 1968 metal frames, which is acting as a heat exchange. You know, so yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. it, it's one of these things where you fix this. I just want the community to know that then you're going to have to do this. And, right. gonna, and, and all, most people in this room know that. The building's right. all that needs some work. Um, well, and, that's, and that, to, <clears throat> to your point, thank you, is the, the building enclosure uh, uh, sucks at a high level, for lack of a better word. You know, there's single pane glass, some originals to the campus. There's plywood in some openings. So it doesn't, it's not properly insulated. It's not properly air sealed. And none in this scope does not contemplate any of those costs. I think we all had our wish would would want a brand new building because it's lived it's outlived its life. But you know, as I've said before, there's no funding mechanism for that in the state of Vermont for school building assistance. So you know, the locale would be responsible for dollar one, and you know, a new high school would be well over 100 million, probably approaching 200 million dollars. Um, so that's not really in the cards. Um, so what I really want to make sure doesn't happen is that we. We're turning back some of the 5.3 million that we have because you know we couldn't decide where we wanted to spend it. We know it's not going to do everything, but I think we need to prioritize and get it out to bid as soon as possible because we're we're losing construction window. Yeah. Yes. And um, the other piece is, as I'm sure you all know, is that contractors are all wildly busy. Uh, material lead times right now are insane. Um, so we've put the the middle school out to bid 
twice and you've gotten crickets. It has, we've had gotten no pre-qualifications, no bids, no nothing. So it's, um, it's a challenge out there. So are you asking for us to give you a direction to go in and then would you come back with the bids at the next I would think, meeting? I, 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 would, I would think you, would, you should take input from the board yeah. where they think they're, yeah. and then come back at the June meeting and say, this is where we're gonna spend the 5.3 million. Yeah, and I think if, if the board uh, is okay with me communicating with, um, yeah, yeah. Mr. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you can communicate with and, 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 and everyone yeah. else there about where the, you know, what what the priority should be. And, and I think what I'm hearing is we just, a motion. it's student. We don't, there's no action. There's no action. Sorry. But, you know, she's seeking input. Student comfort, uh, priority. Huh? Yeah, yeah, student mold. comfort or fix something that could be done. Finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it's right. one of the if it's one of the other Check buildings, the right. side buildings, then and that money finishes it, that would be compelling. Or anything that also would decrease additional costs and spending. Like right? yeah. so, if there's anything mm -hmm. that's going to reduce the oil or yeah. mold or remediation, right. those kinds of things. Yeah, mold is a problem. Yeah. It's yeah. An yeah. Out yeah. I'm allergic to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a big, I go into a place and there's a mold was, issue. It's a problem. There's kids like that. Some of the new board members, we had to pay to, on the bottom floor of the 86 building, all the ceilings had to come down. It's going to have a remediation company exactly. come in. Yeah. So anything where we're not having to pay for things like that, if we can invest in now to. Which would come back with those, those portable dehumidifiers with there. If they're not kept running and empty, we would have that problem. So and that, and when we depend on, um, non-mechanical systems but that we need the human factor to keep those empty failure is a possibility so is there other comments or do you have enough feel like you have enough direction to go yeah. for okay. right. um, so why don't you do b before you go yeah so what you put on controls nothing controls. makes me happier better than the, why, the, why don't we ask for a motion oh. or to accept it and then second and then you can discuss it oh Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're moving on to um, the biomass controls, which we've moved up under the superintendent's report. Oh, okay. um, yeah. I'm looking for a motion for to accept the <coughs> recommendations um, as shown in the board packet. So we'll have a second. second. Um, any discussion? So why don't we have colleagues? Yeah. yeah. Summary. So uh, again, um, when these biomass facilities were built. Uh, they put in the boilers and the, the physical plant, and then they also did the software, right, to control everything. It comes up on a screen on a computer so you can look at how it's operating. Um, as Mr. Payne will tell you, uh, the, uh, a couple things. One, the wood chip boiler itself is oversized for the spaces, um, so it'll blast heat in the high school because it runs uncontrolled. There's no way to ramp it up and down, so it's either on or it's off. Uh, so the wood chip boiler controls will enable us to be able to uh, ramp it up and down based on outside air temperature, right? So we're we're being more efficient with our resources. We're making occupant comfort a priority, and um, we're using we're able to run the biomass longer <laughs> during this during the year. We don't usually uh, start it till October, and we we just turned it off in um, April. Because if we run it on days that are kind of warm, it's like a sauna in the building. Um, so the reason we want to expand the, the, the season of the biomass is because it, it's wildly cheaper to heat per MMBTU with biomass rather than oil. Oil is about $17 an MMBTU, and wood chips is about 7 So the cost savings is significant. Questions? Um, so the the so the wood chip boilers were in the school budget, uh, which you guys have approved. Uh, it was like thirty six or thirty seven dollar, thirty six or thirty seven thousand dollars for each campus. Uh, Efficiency Vermont is kicking in an incentive of ten thousand dollars for each one of those projects, um, and then uh, we applied for a grant from the state to pay for half of each. And they, uh, we got the grant. So the what the 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 thing I the widget I need from the board is to vote to proceed and let me execute the grant so that.
we can pay it down because it's not going to cost. It'll pay for itself in a year. Make a motion. <laughs> well, like, we have a motion and a second already. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all opposed? Any? Well, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun with the concert. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah, also under the superintendent's report, I don't know if the newer board members all know Jonathan Phipps he is the SVSU equity coordinator. And uh, he's here to tell he's been working uh, relentlessly in many hours <laughs> on uh, our Juneteenth celebration in our district. And uh, John, it's time for your infomercials. Okay, so I'm here, as Jim alluded, it is an infomercial, more so advertisement, more so a formal announcement, because on June 17th, exactly one month from today, from noon to 3 p.m., right outside that window and possibly in that room over there, we will be having our annual Juneteenth celebration slash commemoration. This was an initiative we first did last year. The goal last year was to have a hundred of our public in attendance. We did it at the middle school. We either met or slightly exceeded that goal. Um, some details about it. Like I said, June 17th, noon to three, it will be located at, at the, formal, form, the formal name of the place is the Tuttle Lot, which is located at 113 Depot Street, which is right there. Um, our target, target audience for this year is actually going to be significantly larger. I am shooting for a minimum of 200 people in attendance from the community. That is also why we're having it in a downtown and centralized location as opposed to the middle school. Um, this entire effort is going to be paid for by grants that we, we that were awarded to us. It's actually going to be very, very fun. We are going to have, it's free of charge to all that attend, open to all that attend, appropriate for all ages and families. And it will also involve free food, free meals, free dessert as well. But we're, I'm currently working on getting the final bits of entertainment. We already have a DJ lined up. We have some, um, I, guess, I don't know, I guess we could sell entertainment options lined up. I don't want to spoil the surprises, but they are there. And we're going to have something really special, hopefully lined up once, well, hopefully when it comes in. So with that, I'm just here to announce it to the board. I'm going to be announcing it. Hopefully that everybody will get tired of hearing me if you watch uh, PAC TV or whatever. Uh, and... Just please, if you can, be there June 17th and spread the word. The more the merrier. And this is a great effort to try and have community engagement as well as push forward equity initiatives and diversity, initi diversity and inclusion initiatives as well. So with that, it's my time. John, this is rain or shine. Oh, yes. Sorry. I have to make the formal announcement. It will be rain or shine. Last year when we had it, it was very, very cold, but we still had to, for those who were there, it was the one day in June that for some reason was under 40 degrees. I've never experienced that in my life. Well, and the middle school's like a wind tunnel up there. Yeah. So it was cold. It's also another reason why I'm like, yeah, maybe yeah. more <laughs> non normal location would be preferable. But it will be rain or shine. No offense, Chris, another school. <laughs> Just saying your school is on the side of a hill. I'm coming down 279 there, the wind. Yeah. Yeah. No? Nah, it's the buttons right along. Yeah, and also yeah, chose the bones. Yeah, um, Jonathan, if I may, um, I could take off this hat and put on my other hat. I am also the president of the BBC, which is the downtown Bennington organization. Yeah. So I would encourage you to reach out to our executive uh, director of upper of events, Jenny Dewar, and let her um, promote this for you as well. You, um, um, you send me an email with the I name and title. I will gladly do that because that. 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 that would make it. That would make no day. Help me out a lot because I won't remember that one on, on my drive home. Sorry. So, <laughs> Johnson Will. He's been, promoting, he's been promoting this everywhere he can. Yeah. And uh, I hope that uh, that you're actually underestimating your op optimism for how well this event will be. If we hit over 250, then you'll get to see me do it back then. Not successfully, right. but. Hey, we've got that on video. She's been saying. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know when you want me to write the article, too. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yes. And yes, Lori wrote the article for our last stack. If you check on the Bennington banner, you'll see under Tories, uh, I guess, accreditation, you'll see the article from last year was a smashing success. So I'll give you a preview this time, too, instead of instead of the day of. Are you good? I'm good. <laughs> also, if you're a grant, your advertisements will start on Saturday. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So advertise it, promote it. Please, please promote it. And that's all I have for you. Could you back up a little bit and just 
We shouldn't make assumptions. Explain Juneteenth. Good. Thank you. So, all right. So Juneteenth is our nation's newest federal holiday. It is a holiday that basically describes when the last enslaved persons in Texas were formally free from the yoke of chattel slavery in our country. It, um, the reason why it's, it's been a holiday in my community for as far back as I can remember, which is wild, uh, but it became a federal holiday, I believe it was 2021. Yes, 2021 or 2020, one of the two. Um, it's a very important holiday. I think it's a holiday that is long overdue. It's often, it's often described as America's second Independence Day, um, something that I think is the more and more it's injected into the public consciousness, the more and more ground we can make up in trying to, I guess you could say, build relations and restore community trust and actually get to a better spot as a country and as people and as a society than where we are currently. So that's what the holiday is in celebration of. I think it's a great opportunity for our community and our schools to get together. That's the other part about this. This, or this event is also partnered with a, not, a, a number of local large organizations. Last year, we partnered with SVEM, CHC, the town, I think UCS, a number of other organizations also partnered with us with this. They, we, they help us set up. They have their own little tables where they can basically show their initiative and equity and inclusion efforts. And then, like, um, and then we do the exact same thing. And it's, it's a good community organization. It's a good community effort. We're all, we all get to be in the same spot for one day in summer, hopefully warm summer. Uh, and I, it's just what I've been working on relentlessly for about five, six weeks now. So, yes, please promote it. Don't make my five, six jokes. The, the actual holiday is Monday, but we're... Yes, federal holiday is actually on June, June 18th, Monday. Or, yeah, June 19th. June 19th. Excuse me, holy hell. June 19th, Monday. Oh, hell, I'm losing my marbles. Sorry, it's the end of the day. Actual holiday is Monday. It's federally re uh, recognized. We have off, so don't ask me to do anything that day. Um, but we're doing it on Saturday, June 17th, primarily because it is a federal holiday and also because, well, it's easier to do. I think also Father's Day falls on that weekend, if I'm not mistaken. So that took the Sunday out of it. Um, so the 17th Saturday. That's the day. And it takes us out of competition with some other events that are going actually on the holiday. That's so that true. People will be able to participate. They will be able to come by. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, any questions? Oh, sorry, the I, roll, but I, I, I just want to thank you <laughs> publicly for uh, you know, his pursuit for this. It's a lot of work, and he's got a lot of partners on it. So. <clears throat> uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, no, other than our executive session. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on to finance uh, with the treasurer's report. I didn't see, I checked before I uh, got here. I yeah. didn't see yeah. it outside, so I don't think we have an action item for this. So, that's yeah. okay. um, so we're going to move on to the consent agenda. We have minutes, warrants, retirements, leave of absence, resignations, and nominations. And it, um, would you like to move as through this together or as one item, one action, one vote, or should I do a line by line? That was fine. That was fine. Okay. Um, uh, like a motion to accept uh, items one through six um, on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Um, discussion. So uh, for discussion, I just want to make a point that. Um, I, when I was reviewing their resignations uh, under 5C, Tina Patterson is actually not a, an employee of MAU, so we're not we can be excluding her from the yeah, acceptance she's of the resignation. SVSU employee, but that, you know, that makes no difference. Okay. So um, if there's no other discussion, uh, I'll, I, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Or are you, you're good? I, I raised yeah. my hand for personal service. Okay. Um, Motion carries. Uh, we, we're going to move on to policies. Um, in the packet, we have. Uh, why don't we do these one by one? I have um, for A, I have 2200 non discrimination. Um, and the, the motion I'd like is to adopt the policy as. Um, 
as presented. Any discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're good, Tori. Okay. Moving on, we're um, to adopt um, policy number 5087 threats and disruptions to school operations. I have a motion to accept that presented. Second. Any second? Um, all in favor? Aye. And um, final policy this evening is 5405 behavioral intervention. Um, can I have a motion to adopt it as presented? Do you have a motion, Leon, or is that so, Yeah, several grammatic comments to be made in, in sections in terms of names. I sent it to Lisa uh, from the uh, Elementary board, they picked up on it. The director of student support services versus special ed director to be changed, and that won't affect the outcome of the policy. Of the policy. So it's just that we needed to know that there's a change of names and so forth. Okay, and have you, have you communicated with them so that yeah, you can, yeah, okay. Um, so uh, we have a motion to accept the policy with the language changes as provided by Neon. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Good. Um, we are moving on to the administrator's report. Then, okay. uh, first, we introduce the student prep. Is that really what it was? So, uh, we will be, uh, we have a student representative from Mount Anthony. I'll let the student introduce themselves. Uh, and she and a partner have volunteered to serve as student representatives for next June school year as well. Hi, my name is Fonda Mito. I'm the junior at NAU HS, and I felt like I'd be a good representative for the school. I feel like confident. <laughs> Oh. She sought me out. So she, was, <laughs> she was not falling told. She <laughs> sought me out for this opportunity. So, and awesome. may have a partner helping out, right? So there yes. may be exchanging between the two of us. If, should, if I may ask, how did you how did you know about the opening of the seek out from Mr. Um, from a former teacher from the school, she had mentioned the opportunity, and her daughter had was also volunteering kind of mentioned to me saying that I would be a good fit and right. I thought I'd take the opportunity. No, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to have. All right. Uh, I'm gonna uh, can I, turn, uh, I asked because we had gone a long time without the student yeah. rep and I was like <laughs> but if you move you know after you do your year and move on, how do we get the message out that we always want a student representative? So okay. any suggestions you have on that going forward you would welcome. I'm sorry, could you repeat your last name for me? Romuto? Did I say Carolyn? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she knows a lot of people. <laughs> no, right. back in New Jersey days. Oh, okay. All right. Um, a couple of things uh, of note at the high school, and then a couple of calendars. Uh, state standardized testing, the new and improved Vermont uh, CAP. Uh, this is the state mandated testing uh, that we do each spring. Uh, had a quick rollout this year, but I feel like we were successful in completing the first week of testing. That was last week. Ninth graders take a, a test in math and ELA. Eleventh graders take a test in science. We used a modified schedule, so first we had science, uh, high school students knew you were the two-hour delay. That actually allowed us to uh, not interrupt the programming at the tech center. So that's something to think about as we go forward. Uh, the, the state would like to see us have 95% participation. Uh, so we will be continuing to chase down students who did not complete their test last week to meet that goal. Uh, I wanna thank specifically two teachers, uh, Sarah Mnuchin and Adam Carmichael. They are full-time teachers for us. They are participating in the district-sponsored cohort leadership group, which is moving them toward an administrative licensure. Sarah is expecting her first in June. Uh, and in addition to that, they took on the opportunity to organize statewide testing. They did an outstanding job with the support of an administrator, Kelsey Meisel. So I want to publicly thank them for the hours and hours of 
organizing and then problem solving all last week did a great job. Uh, I want to uh, highlight something that Fredrickson and I noted yesterday. We're having an extremely successful spring sports season at the MAU. Uh, women's lacrosse, boys <laughs> lacrosse, baseball, softball, all of them have a record somewhere around the area of nine and three. Uh, they're top rated in their seeding categories. It should be a lot of fun to watch them go forward. Uh, I know the ladies played BBA today. Yeah, we lost. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. But it was better than the last game. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's what we're looking for, too. We, the, the boys will be traveling north on Friday to play them under the lights in Applejack. We're hoping for a closer game as well. Uh, I've had the opportunity to attend uh, tennis matches, try and field in recent weeks. All of those teams will be sending representatives to state meets and tournaments that are coming up, which will be pretty close. Uh, most of the league championships are going to be decided either this week or next. Uh, I also want to congratulate the unified basketball team. They qualified in their first season for the playoffs. They lost to BBA. We'll try to fix that next year. Uh, we're already looking forward to them. If you didn't get a chance to come out and see them this season, you got to come out and watch next year. If you want to think all the good things that high school sports does, Unified Basketball is where it's at. So um, a great team. We're going to graduate quite a few seniors, but we're looking forward already to next season. I um, want to thank the students in the music department. Uh, they put on an evening of performances Friday, May 5th. Uh, as always, they are supported by Miss Sweet. But there was student-directed, student rehearsed, student-performed. Uh, they did short speeches, short scenes from plays, they did songs, dance numbers. It was a lot of fun, uh, and they're not done yet. There's uh, more things coming, but again, a really nice uh, performance uh, from the music department kids. Uh, I want to thank the student council, their advisors. Their advisors are Ms. Uh, Finnegan, Ms. Burke, and Ms. Brigham. We hosted a bonfire last Friday, uh, had a nice turnout. We served food, we served beverages, we played some music, we had a good time. This is a continuation of the uh, fall, winter, they had a bonfire, this is out in the back of the field. Um, we did not start the brush fire that everybody heard about a couple days ago, I just want to make sure of that. <laughs> um, a couple of events, as board members, uh, board members have in the past, and we encourage you in the future to attend any and all of these things that you might want to attend. Uh, please don't feel like you gotta spend every night with us, because it's a lot. Uh, this Saturday, there will be a senior night sponsored by senior families from five to nine at the high school. This is for seniors and their guests. Uh, it's, a, it's a meal, it's games, uh, and there'll be a hypnotist. Uh, the following week is a half day. Wednesday the 24th is a half day for us. Students will be released early. I always put those in in case moms and dads are like, are you really getting out at 11? Yes, they are. Uh, the 25th of this month is an evening of the arts. That's at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. That is both visual art display of work from the year and also a performance in the auditorium. It's a lot of fun. As always, the public is invited and board members are invited. Uh, the 31st Underclassmen Awards is grades 9 through 11, 6 p.m. in the auditorium. Board members have traditionally had representatives present for that. Uh, it's a really good opportunity to thank both the families and the community for all the uh, hard work the kids have accomplished. Saturday the 3rd is prom from 7 to 11. You are not required to go to that. I'd encourage you to find something else to do, but just know that that happens. Uh, that is out on the west end of town at uh, Colgate Park. It's a very nice evening. Uh, we encourage families to take pictures, have picnics at their homes, as there is not a traditional march at that facility. And there's the parking is somewhat limited, so we don't encourage everybody to pile out on the west end and watch kids uh, come on in. Uh, the 7th of June, which isn't that far away, is Senior Awards, 6 p.m. Again, uh, we've had board members in the past attend that, so feel free to do that. February, uh, June the 9th is graduation. That is a Friday afternoon. That will be held on Spinelli Field. That is a ticketed event. That is not open to the public unless you have a ticket. Um, and that um, board members are invited. If you are a board member and you would like to sit on the stage with Mr. Carl Keen and administration or have a preferred seating, you just call us at the high school, ask Ms. Gaber, she'll put you on a list and we'll make sure that gets taken care of. If it, um, sorry? What time? Six o'clock. If it rains, we are going to go inside, which is going to frustrate a lot of family members. 
Uh, so everybody want to do their non rain dance. That would be awesome. Uh, because what will happen is families are given six tickets to attend outside and we have a limited number of tickets for additional. If we go inside, everybody's limited to four guests. So are you going to do it on the baseball field again? We're going to be on Spinelli. We're going to move back on the football field. I know we got some very positive feedback, yeah. but uh, the grounds crew and tech folks have asked for Spinelli. I think it's, there's a couple of technical reasons, but it was a nice little. It was. It was. Uh, last day of school for kids at the high school is Friday the 16th. It is a half day at the high school. Um, we do final exams the last two days. So, and that's it. Did I also read somewhere too that um, Lynn Sweet is up for some kind of national? Oh, award? yes. Boy, I forgot that. She is up for, and I forgot the title off the top of my head. I can't remember. She, she is a finalist uh, in a nationally recognized, for a nationally recognized award for music educators. Um, and she's pretty excited about being nominated if she wins. She will have to tether her to the ground. She'll be a little happy. A little <laughs> but she, uh, yes, Lynn is up for that. She's a, a, a very, very much valued educator um, in the building. And for anybody who has, of course, attended numerous concerts and plays, she does a fantastic job. So uh, a, a great recognition for her. Well, kudos to Lynn. Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me of that as I dropped that. Yeah, a new scholarship. I mean, I wouldn't let one of my articles go unmentioned. So. Oh, <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> yes. Second uh, one tonight. Yeah. Uh, um, Tori, help me for a minute. The, uh, the full name of that? Casey Fraser Memorial Scholarship Fund. Yes. So that will be a new, but thanks to the generosity of the community, there will be a $500 uh, scholarship awarded uh, at senior night. Uh, for a female student participating in athletics, pursuing higher education that is made possible by family. That is a brand new scholarship. Uh, the application is not even printed and available, but that will be awarded this year. Yeah, and she, she mentioned you specifically for being very helpful in the process. So. Well, I've been very generous and thank you for putting that in the paper. Do you, you have a question, sir? Uh, just another comment. You had a well-represented student from the state football group that got inducted into the Vermont Football Hall of Fame. And the head coach was there, and that guy stood out, word of the terms. I mean, he really made this town shine for the write-up on him at the National Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, Josh Worthington, again, right. featured in the paper, so we appreciate it. He and his coach taking a picture. He's a senior graduating this year. Uh, he is a uh, three-sport athlete, an outstanding citizen in the building, a uh, a player. He participates in unified basketball, um, and he. Uh, if you attended the Rutland game, the championship game, you know he gave an impassioned speech at halftime, which Coach Gordon has said absolutely helped ignite them for the second half. So he's an outstanding citizen, and he was recognized in the paper. Thank you for that. Yeah. I could have done two pages. I know. Usually. Good pressure on Chris. That's a tough one to follow. It's tough one to follow. It's a good, you know, it's a tough one to follow. My report is uh, <clears throat> is a lot of, uh, you know, important dates coming up and such. Um, so i get started with that. So uh, as Tim said, we've also concluded the uh, Vermont State Assessment, the BTCAP. Um, you know, we, we uh, everybody in our building tests math and uh, ELA. So, uh, you know, sixth, seventh and eighth grade sciences just for eighth graders. So we've concluded that um, as Mr. Payne uh, said in his building, Mr. Nicholas uh, is busily uh, trying to make sure we're, we're getting any retakes or, or not retakes, sorry, uh, you know, makeup testing done. Uh, and I do want to thank him. Uh, he's a school counselor in the building. He, uh, you know, you know, continues to do his great work of supporting students, but he has uh, done an amazing job for a number of years now with being my testing coordinator. And uh, I can't really imagine not having him in that role. Um, so he, he's kept his other responsibilities going and he has, uh, you know, has helped us pretty much have, you know, run run the new state assessment, you know, system without any, any hiccups or kinks. So I, I really want to uh, thank Mr. Nicholas, Mr. Norm Nicholas for that. Um, on June 1st, 
Um, there's a, a group in the middle school called the Youth Leadership Group. They're presenting uh, at the middle school from 5.30 to 6.30 on some work that they've been doing around vaping prevention. Um, I attended their presentation last spring. Uh, it was excellent. Uh, it was around more focus on, on mental health. Um, this is a group that uh, looks at some survey data with the Alliance for Community Transformation and my prevention coordinator. And then they put together some you know, prevention campaign on a, on a topic. And so they focused on vaping, which we, we all know is a, a, you know, a, a relevant topic uh, for, for kids in our community right now. And uh, I encourage anyone to attend uh, if, you, if you're available that night, 5.30 to 6.30, June 1st. Um, June 2nd, we have a very exciting day at the middle school. It's called our Patriot Celebration Day or Patriot Challenge Day. Um, and it's a, it's a, I guess I would describe it as a massive field day type event. Um, it's centered around community building and team camaraderie um, to, you know, staples of the middle school. Um, again, love to have visitors that day. It's a it's a trip to watch. Um, it's there's an amazing race theme for the day. So we have different advisories competing with different challenges uh, together as an advisory group, and that's a new twist on the day. The amazing race theme. Um, there's a committee that works on this in the school, and they have been planning for months. And uh, it's just a very fun day overall for for students at the middle school. I'm sure Mr. Payne has some fond memories of Patriot Celebration Day. If you don't know Mr. Payne, you know, he likes the MC stuff. Like you've seen him at the, um, at the Nordic ski races, for example, how he's, you know, the MC. So he, I, you may have to invite him back up to do a little MCing of, of Patriot Celebration Day because I think he misses that a little bit. Uh, but June 2nd, full day. Um, and then I have uh, June 15th. It's a Thursday where we have our awards assemblies uh, that morning. I believe we're going with 8, 9, and 10 o'clock, but I'll have, to, I'll have to communicate those those exact times. might be 15 minutes different there. Um, and so that's a 6th and a 7th and an 8th grade award ceremony the morning of June 15th. And then we have our 8th grade celebration uh, happening at 6 p.m. on that evening, June 15th. Um, as Mr. Payne said for the high school, if uh, you know, I'd love to have board members uh, present. Um, and if you would like to be present, if you reach out to the middle school and just touch base with Sarah Hollister, um, she's my admin assistant, and she can make sure same thing that we have a, a nice cozy spot for you. Hope to be outside. We had an um, inside celebration last year, so my you know my rookie my rookie year at the celebration, we had to pivot and go inside. It's actually a amazing night and we did consider holding it inside um, but we are going to go for outside with the backup plan of inside again and that um, that decision is not made until noon that day um, June 16th is a half day for students except for that one and then on June 21st uh, we have a long-standing tradition at the middle school it's been going on since before my 16 years there um, and so it is a, uh, it's a staff luncheon. It's like a potluck luncheon barbecue. Um, we acknowledge retirements, years of service. We have some laughs. We hang out together. Uh, that starts at noon on June 21st. And again, it's an open invite for uh, anyone here that would like to come and hang out with some middle school uh, staff. It's for, you know, for adults. It's the, uh, you know, students will not be there at that time. Um, but it's a, it's a very good time. We have a lot of fun that day. And that is the last day for, uh, for staff. So there's a lot of smiling faces. <laughs> Um, it's the best lunch ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, there's some, uh, you know, there's some, some real, uh, def definitely have to make sure Roxy comes back. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because she makes a heck of a, well, well, a lot of things, but a heck of a, a meatball, a meatball. So, all right. And uh, last little update about hiring. Um, I have a long list of, of positions that, you know, we're working to fill. I've, um, I hesitate to say success successfully because it, it still hasn't been approved by the board, but I have uh, a math, uh, a sixth grade math candidate, a seventh grade math candidate, and a land steward that, uh, you know, nomination forms have been sent over uh, there at the end of last week, so they did not quite make it onto the consent agenda um, for tonight. Um, but, you know, I'm working with those three candidates and very optimistic that, you know, we've went through the everything references, non forms are over here to the offices. So um, looking to, you know, start working with them and getting them onboarded. And then I have uh, still have my hazing, harassment, and bullying a coordinator position, which I've connected with HR. I'm working on uh, uh, finishing up job des job description for posting. I have two security officers. You guys know this. You guys help me 
uh, get the positions in the budget, and I appreciate that. But two security officers uh, that uh, Mr. Tony Lee, associate principal, is working through the hiring process for. I would have to say we had a number of candidates for those positions. I think we had eight candidates for that. Um, I have a science uh, teacher opening that, um, that we're working through uh, interviews right now. I have a literacy coach uh, opening that uh, we're working through interviews right now. And then I also have a health uh, teacher opening that we were covering with a long-term sub this year. And uh, we did a great job, but we're looking to hire a full-time, uh, you know, permanent teacher. And we're working through interviews on that position right now. Um, we also uh, are going to need a, uh, we're, we have a, um, someone taking a leave next year for a special education position. And so uh, we're going to be posting that soon as well. So number of, uh, you know, positions at the middle school and if, uh, you know, just more uh, in the community, if you can you know, direct people to check us out and talk about the good work that's happening at the middle school, we'd really like to talk to some quality candidates. That's all I got. I'd just like to, to commend the middle school on the career day um, event mm -hmm. that was at the middle school. I thought the kids were incredibly polite and it was just a lot of fun to attend. Uh, to attend. Thank you for that. It was very I, well organized. It, it, uh, Hannah Green needs a lot of credit for that. Uh, Hannah Green is, is always the, uh, that's, that's her, her event. She, she really takes that on. There's other people that help out, but Hannah, that's Hannah's Green, Hannah Green's organization. And I agree. The, uh, I was very, very proud of the student body that day. And I, a lot of that I, I chalk up to Hannah and the crew working on it because they've, they've, you know, it's not just go into the fair and check stuff out. There's some very specific uh, question prompts and things. To, yeah, Scott was there uh, giving out stickers, popular booth, or a sticker. Was over his booth. I, I, was over there. I was over there, you know, I, I was there getting around. How many were found around the building? I have one. Oh, God, that was the amazing thing. If it was a piece of paper or something, it'd be all over. But or a sticker, no, those, those made it home. I just had one. If I want around the building, and I do appreciate the hat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so this would be the time to give our first. I, this, so I forgive me. This is the first time I've ever been in a board meeting with a student representative. So do you? Are we going to have normally have her give a report or have them give a report yes. if they want? If they like, yes. would you like to give a report right now, or do you think the introduction for? The, I think I'll say some introductions. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but so if going forward, this will be a forum to have some time you know, to talk to, to ask this group. Okay. Perfect. Um, we're going to move on to the next agenda item, uh, which is committee reports. Um, I don't believe we had any committee meetings because we haven't issued any committees yet. Well, we did. Um, so so yeah. do you want to give a brief? I'm just give a br brief outline. We kind of reset the, the We've reset. Um, we're going to, thanks to the board approval, we are going to begin some fundraising. We're going to be starting at Mayfest. Uh, I'm going to be selling, but Dave might come and pop in and help. Um, bricks in bricks to lay down for the eventual um, complex. So I don't want to call it for Spinelli, but it will be for that complex. So that's going to start. It'll be an ongoing fundraiser. We're going to continue crossing our T's and dotting our I's and making up some handouts for the community. We're going to be planning some community um, forums where we will have um, people from the hospital, people from turf, the turf companies come and speak to community members because we do believe we are going to have to take this back for a bond. Don't I will come back to the board with action once we've for and requested action next month. Might maybe we're still we're still working through it. Sorry. Oh, were well, you done? I just... um, so we're still working through the details, but um, that's pretty much all we talked about. Um, we did have. I, I have to say it was really kind of nice. We had a a couple of um, ex uh, Mount Anthony football players show up to Spinelli. And they're now, I think, Liam, one was your grandson, right? And another, no, yeah. I can't remember their names. Andrew. Yeah. So they were, it was so nice to have their input. Yeah. Um, and now, because now they're playing college ball, so they certainly know the, on turf, so they certainly know the difference. And the one other thing that I want to mention is, not sure if many of you heard, that there is um, a bill in the legislature about banning turf fields. With PFOAs, not turf fields, I mean with PFOAs. So um, that kind of is kind of good for us now because now we 
don't have to prove that there are no PFOAs. The turf company has to certify that. So that takes one of our big things off our list. Um, and also one last thing, Chad Gordon put together a beautiful um, PowerPoint on the community survey that he put out, which I'll hopefully be able to have them just working on power uh, to get power to where I'll be sitting at me best to have it looping. So, but the um, overall um, feeling from the community from all the results is that we definitely need to do something for the whole complex. You know, it was really all, I mean, it really was all very positive. So um, that's about it. Great. Great. That, that was my question it was about, because uh, I, I think it passed the Senate. I don't know if it yeah, it's I think it passed the Senate, but I mean, I think at this point, it's only going to help us. Okay. So that's my report. Um, so we'll move on to the chair's report. I'm going to do this really quickly because we have a couple executive sessions this evening. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is uh, I would like to start having committee reports in, in every meeting where the committee um, members come and give a brief update. And I think we were, I was just talking to Susan about maybe integrating the, um, the committee notes into something that we review as part of our packet um, on a uh, monthly basis, because I'd like to make this like an easier space for the public to access some of the brief summaries, as well as um, uh, in order to make sure that all of the board members are have informed uh, decisions or, or inform, make informed decisions without coming um, without having to go to every committee. Um, while we I've worked with Susan, we've come up with uh, committee assignments. Um, I, I'm just going to go over them briefly, and then we're going to move on. Um, for the Agonson service, we're going to have Wendy Marie and Glenn Thurber. For education, well, Dave Fredrickson, Tori Rich, Wendy Marie, and Kayla Sakura. For finance, um, Leon Johnson, Scott McNamee, and myself. Um, and for uh, the teacher negotiations, I'd leave, like to leave that to be determined. Um, and for ESP, we're going to leave Dave uh, because I think you're just finishing up for right now. Um, for policy, uh, I would love if Leon, Tori, and Katie um, would do the policy. And then I'm going to leave Spinelli Field alone because they're in motion and I don't think that we should. Um, and so if anyone has any thoughts or comments, um, do you know, reach out to me, but I'm going to have these posted on the website. Um, and I believe that's it for my chair report. You say education? I'm sorry. Yes. You're, you're on. Sorry, I drew a blank. I'm sorry. You're doing it so quick. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was trying to I think she said that. <laughs> um, her education is Dave Tory. Wendy and Jayla, and with Jayla as chair. Um, so hopefully you guys can keep going in the motions. We may need by next month you to give us somebody for negotiations with teachers that may begin early the time. Okay. And since you might. Um, yeah. Let's put it out there. Yes, I've had a couple other board members also, so we can talk about it. Yeah, definitely. We can talk about how our, our discussions with the association is. Uh, we would like to be done a little bit different because we'd like to be done negotiations prior to the setting of the budget. This makes sense for a lot of reasons. So uh, we may be sooner than we originally okay. just think. Okay, did I speed read all too much? Does anyone want to say it again? I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to move on. Um, so under FYI, we have a budget status report. Um, the SDSU student enrollment and uh, the list of spring coaches. Um, is there any discussion on any of those items? Jim, did you want to give any summary on the student enrollment or is it? Okay. Does anyone have any discussion on that? Okay, we are going to move into, um, I'd like a motion to move into executive session um, for uh, BSA 3137, the academic records or suspension of or discipline of students um, and invite Superintendent Paul King. To and uh, Nicole Thompson. And Nicole. This is, I'm doing this, I, when I modified it, I started with what we had and then this is the next are one. Are you staying? Okay. Did I, is, 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 did I add? So 
We yes. Or we do not need this one. No. It's not, oh. it's not just this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we Is are. It, right? this, I'm not aware of. That's the I, one that was originally. This is what was originally. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was. In, I wasn't sure if it was. Why don't, why don't, because it's on there, why don't we go ahead and announce right, it? We, we, last vote principles of state for a minute. We'll have a discussion and then we'll. Okay. Do we need Nick Dalton this one as well? Uh, this is a student no. Student? So, okay. Okay. so to clarify, um, ma'am, do you have something to That's state level. Something going to happen. Yeah. I'll do that. Whether there be an action item again, there's no action item associated with this. So to clarify, I'd like a motion to move into an executive session for the academic records or suspension of discipline, keeping um, Superintendent Culkeen and Principal Payne in. Um, can I have a motion? And that's as Principal Wire. Sorry. So much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now an executive session. Um, so the next item on the agenda is to go into back into executive session, though. Right, that's what I'm starting oh, okay. to go into executive session under VSA 3133, the appointment or employment and evaluation of a public officer or employee provided that the public body shall make a final decision, hire or appoint a public officer or employee in an open meeting and shall explain the reasons for a final decision during the open meeting. Um, we will be inviting um, Nick Galt and Superintendent Coquine. Um, and we will not have an action item no coming out of this. Um, we have a motion to go into executive session. So, Second. All in favor? Sure. Thank, Thank you. you.